Well, hello viewers. Uh, this is going to be the uh, desktop review of the FN FNP45 Tactical. And uh, all the cool stuff that comes with the Tactical version. So let's go ahead and get started with our review. Uh, first and foremost, the gun comes in this really, really cool uh, black ballistic nylon case. Um, doesn't come in a uh, doesn't come in an actual box. It comes in this case, and the case basically contains everything that you need to make it a tactical gun. Some of the cool stuff about it, though, the case is very high quality. It's ballistic nylon, and um, it's fairly discreet, other than the large FN logo on there. Um, you can you can pack this uh, in your car or something and not have it really uh, attract too much attention. So a couple cool things about it, um, as it comes from the factory, you're going to have your, uh, your factory paperwork and your shell casing here, um, warranty and instruction cards. Um, the one cool thing though uh, that I think I like about this is especially if you're going to have a suppressor with you, it's nice having a case that has a document holder so that you can have a copy of your tax stamp with you and that's where that's going to go in here. I actually removed it because I'm doing the video, so there's no sense in you guys seeing my tax stamp and the information on it. But that's uh, that's where I keep it when I'm uh, when I've got this gun. So what comes with the gun? Well, the two things that don't come with it are this tactical light and the suppressor. When you get the gun, uh, you're going to get a gun lock in the suppressor holder. Um, you get three 15-round magazines. Um, they're very nice high quality mags. Um, they've got this kind of a weird mushroom follower on there and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but they are very very nice high quality mags. They've got sort of a black um, a black chrome look to them. Um, they are dust resistant. They're highly dust resistant. Made in the USA and uh, just really nice high quality uh, magazines. 15 rounds of 45 caliber ACP ammunition in those, so very, very cool. Um, you also get a utility case, and in the utility case are these little plastic containers. Um, they contain both the tools and hardware necessary to swap out the optic mount on the gun, and also in here are, let's see if I can find them, are your different back straps. So the gun comes with a total of four back straps. Um, and one thing that's kind of cool about them, I don't know if you can see these or not, um, they have both a checkered style back strap and just sort of a grooved style back strap. So that is, let me see if I can get a good view of that. That's your grooved one and that's your checkered one. I guess it just depends on what works best for you. I like the grooved ones best. Then of course you get the pistol. Um, it's held in securely. Uh, it's kind of nice. And all these uh, all these accessories are velcroed in, so you can change it up however you want. If you don't want to carry something, you don't have to. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the gun here. Go ahead and make sure, just for safety's sake, everybody's cool. Empty magazine and an empty chamber on the gun. So, what makes this a tactical pistol? Well, first and foremost, as you can see here, it has a threaded barrel. Uh, so a right hand thread and uh, fairly, it's a nor it's not a, any type of a goofy thread pitch, so you can pretty much any uh, screw on suppressor, you'll be able to find the right adapter for it. It also has suppressor height sights, and they are night sights, front and rear. Uh, I believe they are Trigicon, and they are very, very nice quality. Let's see if I can get a good view of those. Very, very nice quality, um, all steel sights. So the other thing um, that this gun has, which is obviously very cool, is the ability to mount an RMR, or an op any type of red dot optic on it. Um, it does come with several adapter plates, and the adapter plates uh, enable you to run a variety of different optics. I happen to have a Trigicon RMR on here. 
but you can also fit a Burris. Um, I've seen a Vortex uh, RMR fitted on there. So it will fit more than one type, so you're not limited to just buying um, the Trigicon version. And we'll go in, we'll get into that in just a minute uh, on some of the differences between these. And I got to tell you, I'm, you know, on the cool factor, I get it. Um, but we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about sort of shooting with that. Um, from there, everything else is pretty much standard FNP 45. Um, the slide is marked tactical. Let's see if I can get that on there. It is marked FNP tactical. So, um, and some of the last changes between this and the standard version it does have a slightly crisper trigger. Um, now I will tell you that the FNP 45 has a very good trigger to begin with. So you're not going to be displeased with this. And this is just kind of one step up from that. And of course you get your three 15 round high cap mags. Whereas the standard version I believe has 13 round, two 13 round mags and one 15 round mag that comes with it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the gun. Um, so um, obviously the big differences are you've got your threaded uh, threaded barrel, you've got your tall sights, you have the ability to mount your um, RMR. Some of the other things I like about the gun, um, obviously it's all American made, which um, I do like. Um, it also has um, it also has a couple of other cool features about it. Um, it's got a 1913 Picatinny rail down here on the bottom. Um, I've got a, uh, I'm running a uh, TLR1 HL, which is the high lumen light on there and it fits nicely um, and uh, beautifully uh, uh, still a good balance on the gun. Um, this is a, an ambidextrous pistol so you've got a mag release on both sides and the one nice thing about it is it's a, it's a true uh, push button it's not the uh, HK style one where you've got sort of the, or the uh, European style where you've got the, the tabs that you pull down like the VP9. Um, you've got a, uh, a slide stop on both sides, one here and one on that side. And then of course you've got your safety controls here. Now one of the cool things for those of you who don't know about the FNP 45, uh, one of the cool parts about this is a la the HK USP uh, and some of those pistols, uh, you can run this gun either as a double action, uh, in, in double action mode with the safety engaged. You can run it in single action with the safety engaged, so cocked and locked. Or you can use the, uh, you can use this as a decocker and let the hammer down with it. And so it really does give you great flexibility on how you choose to carry it and how you choose um, to, uh, to use it. So. For those of you who are 1911 guys, um, the transition to this gun is very easy. And for those of you who get a little funky with uh, the uh, ha be hammer being back and the gun on safe, um, you don't have to carry it that way. So it's pretty cool. Um, also, the neat part about it is if you're a SIG guy, um, the decocker is in a very uh, normal position. You'll you'll be able to you'll be able to um, to transition to it very simply. Uh, very nice checkering on the on the grips, uh, both on the on the front strap and on the sides. And of course, you have the ability to change out the back strap on this gun. One kind of interesting thing about that, you may see that tiny little hole right there. Let me see if I can get close to that right there. That tiny little hole. What you have to do is put a small punch uh, in that hole, and then kind of this thing comes off the back side of it. Um, there's a little tiny prong, plastic prong, that holds that in place. Um, but uh, if you don't know what you're looking for, the first time I did this, of course I didn't read the instructions, um, but looking for that little tiny hole was um, not the most intuitive thing in the world. So managed to figure it out, but uh, took a little bit of time. Um, overall, the pistol is extremely high quality. Um, shooting it has been fantastic. It is a great shooting gun. Uh, some interesting things about the pistol, um, for uh, 45 ACP, it is a very soft recoiling gun, um, high magazine capacity for 45 ACP, and of course this one is an absolutely logical, um, logical uh, 
uh, uh, gun to shoot suppressed. So let's talk a little bit about that since I've got the suppressor here. Um, this is my AAC <coughs> Tyrant 45 can. Um, obviously you can swap out the plunger on these so that you can uh, mount it on a variety of different thread pitches. Um, in this case I will um, remove the thread protector. Um, just slide just unscrews. It's a standard right hand thread and can goes on. Nice and snug. And there you have the gun with the suppressor on there. The nice thing about the Tyrant 45 is it doesn't weigh a whole lot. So it gives you the opportunity to be able to um, not have just a huge amount of uh, mass out there in front of the gun when you're trying to shoot it. Uh, from there, let's talk a little bit about the RMR. So um, try and get you a, guys a picture. I don't know if I'll be able to do this or not. A little bit of what... There you go. So that is the sight picture that you're going to have when you look down the gun. Um, the RMR co-witnesses with the iron sights, which is kind of neat. Um, I, I will tell you guys, I'm a little old-fashioned. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not the biggest fan of these. It is cool. It's got great cool factor. Um, but ultimately, I think that relying on a red dot, especially on a pistol, is unnecessary. Um, this gun has excellent iron sights. They're three dot sights. They're Trigicon. Um, and uh, you know, I've got absolutely no trouble whatsoever using these iron sights um, and you know, shooting at 25 yards um, all day long. The RMR is very cool, but what tends to happen is you tend to look over the sights and, um, and you start, as you start relying on that red dot. The problems that you run into is, number one, sometimes you get what's called red dot fade, which is you're looking at this optic uh, from an angle where the red dot is not visible. And I have a problem with that because then where your focal plane is is right here on the sight. You're not looking out in front of the gun or at your target or anything or the threat that's out here. What you're doing is you're staring at this thing looking for your red dot, trying to acquire your red dot. Once you acquire it with your eye, then you have to change your focal plane out in front of the gun and have that red dot hover in front of your eye. To me, it just takes more time. Um, I'm, a, I'm a front sight guy, I believe in staring at the front, or having the front sight in my vision. Um, when I see a bad guy, I put my front sight on the bad guy. Uh, the bad guy should blur out, you should have your front sight nice and clear. Rear sight in view, that should be blurred out as well. Uh, breathe and squeeze, and bad guy goes away. And uh, that's just, that's something that over the years I've had great success with. Um, it's accurate, it's very rapid, and it's very natural. Your, your eyes um, tend, to, um, tend to be able to acquire a target very accurately time after time after time. What I found myself doing with this gun, uh, and I'm not talking about when we were just sort of playing target shooting, but in a, in a more dynamic environment, I would lose the red dot. And then I would find myself trying to hunt for the red dot when I found it, which again, I'm staring directly at the optic then, then I've got to look forward again and look find my target and, and more than once when I did that, I would have lost the red dot again. And before you know it, I would just go back to using the iron sights and looking straight through the optic. So um, not sold on the RMR uh, when it comes to a pistol. I do like the RMR mounted on top of an ACOG um, when you're looking for like a one power red dot optic to go with a four power ACOG. Um, that's a different story, but in this one, in this case, um, again, still debatable. Um, you want to do something like a 9 MOA red dot so it's nice and big so you can find it because remember you're going to be holding the gun and the optic at arm's length uh, when you're doing this so if you have a real fine red dot you're not going to be able to find it or at least it'll make it a lot more difficult. Um, but the bigger red dot uh, when it's out there when you've got your arms extended out um, you know two and a half feet in front of your face with the, with the optic at the fore end of that um, that's going to make that right. So, 
Overall, guys, um, a really, really interesting gun. I will tell you, um, not the cheapest thing in the world, for especially if not for a polymer gun. Uh, but the fact that it's made in the USA, it's made by FN Herstal. A um, couple of things, you know, it's cold hammer forged barrel, it's an all stainless slide. Uh, polymer frame, but all the pieces inside are stainless steel, all the, all the, all the important bits. Um, overall, the quality of the gun is extremely good. Um, this, this particular pistol, this particular design pistol, was uh, one of the candidates for the Army's replacement for the M9 Beretta. Um, so it was built to be mil spec. Uh, more and more government agencies are picking them up now as their, their duty issue sidearm. It's a great alternative um, to all other polymer pistols out there. I'm a huge Glock fan, you guys know that, but um, this is an alternative to it, especially if you like, let's say, more SIG or HK style controls on a polymer pistol. This is a great alternative. So, anyway, uh, thanks guys for, for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, just leave them in the comments section. Um, if you enjoy the view, the video, give me a thumbs up, and um, don't forget to subscribe and uh, tell your friends about it, share the videos. Um, appreciate it, and we'll talk to you on the next one.